Welcome once again to Heart of a Shepherd as I continue to be on location in Newburn, North Carolina. And uh, I do hope the sounds and the background will not be uh, something that will draw away your attention from the eternal truths that we're studying today. Now our scripture reading is Hosea chapter 8, 9, and 10. And I've titled the devotional, Sowing the Wind, Reaping the Whirlwind. Hosea 8, through 10. I do invite you to open your Bible and follow with me. Well, Hosea chapter 8, we have the wickedness of Israel invited God's judgment. Now, Hosea 8 presented a denouncement of Israel's sins and a progression of God's judgment against the nation. Now, sounding the alarm, Hosea the prophet was commanded to, and I quote, set the trumpet to thy mouth. Chapter 8 and verse 1. Now Israel was warned her enemy was coming as an eagle against the house of the Lord. And so the people's transgressions were numbered. Now notice, if you would, then the sins of Israel. Israel's hypocrisy in the first four verses was portrayed, for they cried to the Lord, My God, we know thee. Chapter 8 and verse 2. And yet the nation was guilty of rejecting that which was good and acceptable in the eyes of the Lord, in verse 3. Well, under Jeroboam's leadership, who was the first king of Israel, Israel, uh, the first king of northern Israel, Israel rebelled against David's lineage. And they made themselves kings and princes. The Lord declared, in verse 4 then, I knew it not. Now, judged and condemned, beginning in verse 5 through 14. Again, Jeroboam, the first king of northern Israel, had made idols for the people to worship and provoked the Lord to anger, according to verse 5. And therefore the Lord declared that they and their idols would be destroyed. Israel, in the words of the prophet, had, quote, sown the wind and they would reap the whirlwind, verse 7. Now, they had sown nothing, that is, and would reap nothing. They had sown strangers. Again, we have that word, strangers, being the non-Hebrew people, the foreign people, and we read of those strangers that they had devoured their future. And by the way, again, I draw a parallel to what is happening in our nation today. More and more millions of strangers, of foreigners, are pouring into our borders who do not love our country, and they also do not love our God. They are devouring our future. Now again, this is not an anti-immigrant uh, word as much as it is the policies of our United States are allowing our future to be swallowed up. In fact, as you read the, the verse, Hosea declared the people of Israel would be, in verse 8, swallowed up by the Gentiles as a vessel. And so when you begin to dilute a culture, whether it's the United States or it's Eastern Europe, particularly you think about uh, England and some of the other nations, we are being swallowed up and so will be our culture. And so it became for the ten tribes of northern Israel, for they were assimilated by the Gentile nations, never returned to their homeland their enemies literally devoured the people and the nation's resources, verses 9 through 13. Now, the prophet's lamentations over Israel concluded with the declaration, quote, Israel hath forgotten, and that is not only forgotten, but forsaken his maker and built temples. Temples to what? Temples to idols, gods that were not gods at all. And Judah, the southern kingdom, hath multiplied fenced cities, and that is walled cities. But the Lord declared, I will send a fire upon his cities, and it shall devour the palaces thereof. In other words, their compromise had led them to a place that there was no safety, no security. Well, a closing thought for chapter 8 is this. The description of Israel's sins and their consequences really should awaken us to the effects of personal, family, and national sins. In the words of Hosea, the people would reap as they had sown, in verse 7, and wickedness would bring the nation to nothing. The people were silly and foolish, and their strength and resources were devoured by strangers. Indeed, the death toll of that nation was when its people were swallowed up 
by the Gentiles. And then a word of warning, and that is that God is sovereign, and history reveals a cyclical pattern in the rise and fall of nations. When the people of a nation set their hearts to worship and serve the Lord, He blesses the nation with His grace and preserves it. However, when a nation turns from the Lord and rejects His word, law, and commandments, the people follow a path of moral depravity and self-destruction. And I would ask you the question, does it sound familiar? Surely it must. Well, thank you for joining me for the first of two video devotionals. The second will follow over Hosea chapter 9 and chapter 10. God bless. Bye-bye.